I still remember. I still remember when I asked my grandmother in that day. I asked her, Grandma, how can I get a baby? She looked at me and smiled. Then she told me, honey, it's very easy. After you get married, grab some beans and put it in your hand. And in the morning, you will have a baby. <laughs> a few months later, I got married. In that time, I was 14 years old. And as any other Syrian housewife, I did a lot of cleaning, cooking. Also, I got two babies, but not because of beans. <laughs> the only thing I did probably more than any Syrian housewife, I watched a lot of American movie. I love what I saw in a movie. I love the culture, the people, the language, the freedom, the justice. Also, I noticed that American women can decide whatever they want. Then I start to ask myself, why I cannot make my own decision? What is the difference between American women and Syrian women? And I made my own decision. The first decision I made to learn English. And because it's forbidden in my country to learn English and be outside working with other people, I decide to hide in a bathroom. Day by day, and month by month, year by year, I was very, very happy with my achievement, even though my husband thought I'm crazy because I'm talking to myself in front of the mirror. But I didn't tell him that I'm practicing my English and I'm very happy with my little secret. Then 2011 came. In the beginning, I thought it will be a very nice year, but it wasn't. The war started in my country and everything changed in my life. My husband was taken from me. My children was in very big danger. And because it's very easy for someone to come and kill me with my kids, I hide most of the time with other family in a basement. In the basement, I couldn't see anything. It was so dark, but I could hear the voices around me. Mother crying, children crying, Mother calling their son, they don't know if they're still in the basement, if they are die, nobody knows. I was so scared, but I couldn't cry. I just wanted for the woman and for the mother and their kids to stay calm. Because might, somebody might come to the basement and kill all of us. Then I called the children and I asked them to sit around me and I tell them a story. I just wanted to their mind to go to that safe place where there are a lot of games, music, and food. Being in a basement, in the darkness, with a very limited food and water, with a lot of fear, losing my husband and my children fear, let me decide to flee the country. And because I am not allowed to get my passport and I'm not allowed to fly, I decide to go to Jordan by bus. I went to Jordan by bus and a lot of questions come to my mind. Is it the last time I will see my family? Is it the last time I will smell the jasmine in my city? Is it the last time I will see the ruins I arrived in Jordan. And the Jordan police, when they knew that we are Syrian, he said, Syrian, go back to your country. Or you can stay in a camp. I felt mad. I said, no. I wanted to raise my kids in a city. I wanted my kids to go to school. He was mad at me, and he told me, young lady, stop talking and go sit in the end of the bus. We stay in the Jordan border about three days. We run out of food. And because we don't have any other choice, we paid a lot of money just to allow us to pass their country. Then we arrive at Aqaba, and we wait for that boat about 17 hours. Then the boat came, we catch the boat, and we arrive to Sina. We drove long time to Cairo. 
When I arrived Cairo, I was so happy, but I noticed that Cairo is very different than Damascus. It's a huge city, very crowded, and it's not safe for women. And as a single mother, I have to work, I have to support my family. So I decide probably it will be a good idea to wear as an Egyptian woman and speak Egyptian accent so nobody will notice that I'm alone here. So I start wearing long skirt, very long scarf, and spoke Egyptian accent. And one day, I was waiting for the metro. An Egyptian woman came and asked me, dear, are you Syrian? Immediately, I said no. She said, don't be afraid. I am here to help you. I just want to give you this 20 Egyptian pound. It might help you. And because I refused, she reached my purse and put the money inside, and then she left. I was shocked. I asked myself, how did she know that I'm Syrian? And I want to check my purse. Not only I didn't find the money, but also my wallet was gone. In that day, I was paid, but I wasn't very sad about the money. I was very sad because my only mother and father picture was in that wallet. I went to the police to claim the situation. They told me, if you don't like our country, go back to your country. In that time, a lot of Syrian family was trafficking to Europe for a better life. And I was about to decide to traffic with my two sons to Europe until I got that phone call who saved my life. I got a phone call from immigration officer. He told me, congratulations, you got accepted as a refugee in the United States. Immediately, I felt like I am that pink, purple butterfly flying up <laughs> to Cairo, blue sky. It's America, it is my dream, it is a freedom country, it is a long love story between me and her. Now, I am in America, I'm not really watch a lot of American movie because I feel I am the movie. <laughs> also, I experienced too many things, too many new things I never did before. I ride stick shift car. I'm driving stick shift car. I ride bicycle and riding a horse. And I join amazing Jewish American family Thanksgiving. I was really thankful because they allow me to be part of their family. Also, I met two American lady in a bank, and when they saw me, one of them said, oh my gosh, Muslims are coming. <laughs> and because I'm so excited to meet American people, I said, yes, hi, how are you? <laughs> and she really fell afraid, and she said, oh my gosh, she speaks English too. <laughs> then, for me, I, I really noticed that she is really scared of me, but I was so excited to meet new people, so kind of. But I am here to tell you, my, America, my mother, and you are my brother and sister, so if you see somebody look like me or different than you, please smile and be kind. Thank you.